All right. Good morning, guys. Good evening. Good afternoon. How are you guys? Good. How are you? Uh, good. 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 All right. Yep. All right. All right. Uh, so we got 190 people, 200, 250. Okay. I'm just going to stop you counting. Can't, you can't keep up. <laughs> no, I can't keep up. All right. So we got a lot of people coming into this room today. Um, we have a very special webinar today uh, going over um, stop losses. Now, as we get into this, I want to ask you guys your own experiences of stop losses. What would you say is, you know, one of the biggest concerns? Um, usually, I would think stop loss placement is, is always a concern, knowing exactly where the, the best place is, you know, the appropriate place. If it's too far, you know, away or what the exact placement should be is usually the, the main concern most people have. So the stop loss. Okay. Okay, so let's let's go over some of the things that we normally hear about stop losses. So, if if I'm new to the game and uh, there is some pro out there and he's giving me guidance on where I should put my stop loss because I don't want to learn how to use a stop loss. I just want to know what's the answer, what's the quick answer to where should I put my stop loss. Well, depends who you um, ask. <laughs> well, just in general, what, what what do people do in general when it comes to stop losses? Uh, they have like a fixed answer, like it's 10 pips or, um, you know, above the recent high or above the recent low, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Some people even include indicators, right? Once yeah. we cross the indicator to this side, I'll put my stop loss on that side. Yeah. Like there's no, there's no logic behind trading itself, but arbitrary rules that have no basis in the market. Right? All right, all right, all right. People just want a simple rule. Yes, yes. A simple rule in a complex market, right? Yep. Unfortunately. All right, all right. So uh, what, what are your experiences? So all of you guys who are in this room, we've got 608 people in this room right now. What do, what do you guys say is your... Um, experiences with stop loss. How many of you guys have ever experimented with, you know what, don't put a stop loss. <laughs> you know, it keeps getting hit, just don't put a stop loss. <laughs> it's like, then it doesn't get hit. Yeah, then, then you will never get stopped out. It's not possible. Like, <laughs> I've never done it, but I thought about it back, yeah. in, back in the day. Everyone, fortunately, I never did. Everyone's gone through that. Everyone's gone through that. And then uh, what's the excuse that comes behind it? Oh, I use a mental stop loss. Yeah, like I'm always watching the charts anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm there regardless. I'm, I'm right there. Mental stop loss. Yeah. Right? Okay. So what are some of the other ones? What are some of the other ones? So when you're doing uh, a certain currency pair, oh, 30 pips. Some people go by ATR saying one ATR, two ATR should be your stop loss. Okay, a little bit more logic to it, a little bit more reasoning behind it. But I wanna talk about this today. So it's gonna to be really, really fun. So anything you guys wanna add here on the panel that uh, we should cover? What are some of the things maybe some of the students have reached out to you for saying, I need help with stop losses or I have some questions about this. Anything you guys have seen that in a recent, uh, recent past? I, I think from the elite, um, a lot of students move their stop loss too quickly. They get stopped out and then the trade uh, moves in their direction for like a okay. hundred pips. So these are not people who have a placement issue. They have an issue with not should I move my stop loss now that the trade's working. Okay, yeah, so that's a whole right. way of itself, moving, right? moving it's, it's towards break even or, you know, make it more tight, not widen it. Mm. Just to be clear. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's like, it was 30 pips, but, uh, you know, I'll make it 100 pips now, just in case. <laughs> okay. No. All right. All right. So we're going to talk about this stuff today. Um, and uh, a lot of you guys who are in this room, you guys are sharing your experiences. Um, again, guys, not to worry. Anything that you guys are typing in the chat, uh, me and my team can see it. However, you won't be able to see it from each other. Uh, you won't be able to see it from each other. So not to worry, anything you have to say, it's confidential. It is only for us to see. So you do not feel shy to participate. All right. All right. So 
shall we begin? Shall we uh, start talking about this? I see a lot of people are saying I miss Raju. Like, all right. <laughs> Raju comes once a week or so on YouTube. He doesn't come onto these webinars. Like, <laughs> like, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> and stop loss is probably not something Raju should be explaining. <laughs> like, yeah, for sure. All right, cool, cool. All right, guys, so let's get started. Let's get started. So thank you guys here on the panel. Uh, we're going to get going. I'm going to try to see if I can get you as many aha moments uh, at a time. How many of you guys are here for the very first time to these webinars? Like, you don't know who I am. Um, you know, first time to these webinars, you're like, what is this brown guy on my screen? And why is there a dog with a garlic behind him? And by the way, that's <laughs> our most fault. <laughs> Okay, so we, we have some people for the first time I'm here. I'm in the office. <laughs> like, all right, cool, cool. So welcome, guys. Those of you guys who are here for the first time. And just before we get started, I want to take a poll here. Uh, let me see if I have the poll. Um, if you guys can, please let me know on this. You guys should have a poll on your screen that tells you, are you guys students of the Mastering Price Section 2.0? So I wanna know how many of you guys here are returning students versus how many of you guys uh, of you here are completely new, never been to the webinars before, or um, are fairly new, but just haven't picked up uh, uh, our training program yet. Okay, so a lot of you guys here are returning students. So welcome back for those of you guys who are returning students. All right, so let's get started. So we got 73% uh, of you guys who are students at Urban Forex, 27% of you guys who are uh, brand new. Okay, cool, cool. All right, uh, there we go. Okay, let's get started. Let's get started. Okay, so those of you guys on the panel, thank you very much. And I'll take over from here. Okay, I'll cool. take over from here. Enjoy everybody. Cheers. Okay. Cheers, cheers. All right, all right, all right. So here we go. Now, one of the main things I wanna talk about today uh, is all around stop losses. Again, for those of you guys who do not know me, my name is Naveen Prithiani. I am the senior trader at Urban Forex, also the CEO and mentor at Urban Forex uh, and CEO of Black Tower Investments in Hong Kong and CEO of Anticipate Don't Participate DMCC in Dubai. Okay, I can list the credentials on and on and on, but that's not why you're here. And one, one of the main things that I'm known for is to make complex things easy, okay? Is to make complex things easy. So here's what we're gonna do. This is not your typical webinar. So feel free to interact with me. When, when I say typical webinar, I don't sit here and talk stories and stories and stories and bore the hell out of you. We're gonna go straight into it. Actionable things that you can use all the time, 60 minutes on the clock, Let's get started. Here we go. Okay, let's start off by a little whiteboard. Here we go. Uh, let me get the, uh, the chat out so I can see your messages as well. All right. Okay, doing a circle on my screen. Can you guys see it? Yeah, okay, perfect, perfect. Let's get started. Okay, so now I'm gonna run through something very, very basic, really, really quickly. How many of you guys here know your basics? Okay, we got some people saying, yes, I know some basics. How many of you guys feel you don't know your basics? Okay, I see, I see one person saying, I hope so. <laughs> okay, all right. Here's what's important about the basics. Unfortunately, us as human beings, we think if something is so simple, so easy, we tend to brush it off rather than seeing how much power is behind that. So let's talk about one thing in general. Okay, what's one major thing when it comes to stop loss? What do people say when, if this happens, let, let me draw it for you. If I say the prices are going down, they pull back, they go down, and then they go up, pull back, and they go up, and if you buy it from here, where are people putting stop losses? Where are putting stop losses? Where are people putting stop losses? Recent low, right? Right here. They're putting their stop losses right there. Correct? Okay. What they're talking about is what's the most recent low that he's made. 
and I'll put my stop losses there. Some people say that as, okay, well, that's actually within my 30 pips anyways that I normally do. So my stop loss is there. Okay, so far so good. Everyone with me so far? Okay, let's put this to the test. Okay. Consider this urban forex myth busters. <laughs> okay, let's put this to the test. So let's start with basic knowledge. Okay, basic knowledge of do you know what you're doing in the markets to begin with? To begin with, once we identify the basics, you'll have a solid understanding of, wait a minute, I can't use my stop loss like that. It won't work in this situation. So let's start with that. What are the three different states of the market? What are the three different states of the market? All right, we got trend. We got range. And we got channel. Right? These are the three different states of the market. When they invent a fourth state, you please let me know. But until then, for the longest of time, we run within these three states. Okay? So far, so good? No, not United States. <laughs> They're definitely not United, these three at all. Okay, so there are the three different states. Now, basic stuff, a trend, higher high, higher low sequence, and support resistance technically always gets honored. It gets honored. It doesn't break it. Okay, that's when you know you're in a trending state. In a ranging state, support and resistance holds. It doesn't let you through, right? That's a ranging state. Final state is a channel, which means support and resistance gets violated, but it doesn't mean the market's turning around. Violated, but it doesn't mean it's turning around. It just has to do a very deep pullback, very deep pullback, very deep pullback. And when he makes a new high, it's slightly higher. So far, so good. Fair enough. Everyone understand a channel state? This is the stuff that we draw like this, right? All right. Now, let's do the fun stuff now, okay? Here's the fun part now. How many of you guys would be like, this is easy stuff, brown man. Why are you teaching me this stuff? Am I going to waste 60 minutes of my time because of this nonsense? How many of you guys are feeling like that right now? Right? Basics. Basics. Don't, don't tell me basics. I'm a pro. I make more money than Bill Gates. Don't teach me basics. <laughs> okay. So let's go into it a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper. Okay. And let's trust the reason why you're here. You're here because there's a hole somewhere that you want to fill, that you want to find out, is there more to it than what I already know? So let's go into it a little bit deeper. So when you have a ranging market, and in that ranging market, you got pinballs, boing, 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 and then the range breaks. Okay, the range breaks. Now, if the price comes back down to here, should I buy? I'm asking a very simple, basic question. Support equals resistance, resistance equals support. Okay, I see many yeses, many noes. This is what we call basics. Is the basic knowledge cemented well in the understanding? Now, if we simply look at it as a technical pattern, yes, you're supposed to buy. Now, if I buy this, here's the question. If I buy this, where am I normally putting my stop loss? What we just talked about. We would put it, here, your recent low, right? We would put it right there and saying, that's my stop loss, correct? So I'm gonna put that there, stop loss. Okay, here's the thing. Once this thing broke out, how do I know this thing is going to go full blown trend mode and it's not going to be a channel mode? How do I know that? What if this thing is like a channel? He goes up slightly higher. That means he wants to come down here and then take off. What happens to your stop loss then? Simple question, right? Simple question. Now, 
does the logic of put your stop loss below your recent low work in this particular case? No, no. So can you always use the feeling of I need to put my stop loss there? And what happens in the scenario is if it comes down to here, it stops people out and then it goes. How many of you guys had that experience ever in your past saying, and I just got stopped out and then the trade worked. That mother beep, <laughs> right? You get that feeling sometimes, right? Like, it's like, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? And it's not happening to you because you have bad luck or someone is after you. They're, they don't know your IP address and where you live exactly. But like today, we're going to mess with this guy. No, no one's doing that. No one's doing that. It's just a matter of what you know versus what you should know. It's just a lack of knowledge. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So uh, Don and uh, uh, Diore. Yeah, lack of knowledge. That's correct. That's correct. All right. So here we go. Now let's talk about certain things. Let's talk about certain things. Okay. Now stop losses are used in various elements, right? Okay. So we talked about recent low, recent highs. And now we know we can't really do that because there's no logic to it. There's no logic to it. Let's start with something interesting right now. Here we go. Ready? The markets are coming down. Should I buy it? Okay, all of you guys are saying no. Good, I don't see one person saying yes, good. Should I buy it? Should I buy it? So now let, let me understand one thing because I'm reading all the text, right? Earlier here, we said no, because we don't know it's going to go for a buy. Now that we know it's a buy, the answers are like, oh, it's too late. So it seems like we can't ever trade. Well, there's never going to be a trade ever. All right, let's take it a little step further. Should I buy it now? Okay, I'm seeing a lot of yeses now. More yeses than noes. Let's say I buy it now. Where's my stop loss? Okay, so let's work with that theory of below my recent low. So first things first, the trade has moved significantly away from the low. I'm just joining here. My stop loss is down in hell with the devil. It's just chilling with him, having a pina colada down there. And I'm expecting for me to make any money, I need this movement to continue more. To continue more. That is the only way I'm going to make any money. And to, for him to continue more this much, I make a risk to reward of simply one is to one. If my risk is $100, then this profit is $100. That's very dangerous. That's very dangerous because don't forget, you have to pay spread. So one is to one is not a profitable game in the long run. So far so good. So let's, let's talk about something a little bit more basic. How many of you guys know how the Forex markets operate? How about that? How about that? Let's take it even deeper. Take it even deeper into the basics. Let's just really get into the nitty gritty today and be like, all right, let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, so here's what the markets are doing. Okay, ready? The markets, I'm going to put this as Euro USD. 
Okay, here we go. Euro USD, a currency everyone's familiar with. The chart is doing this. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. I want you to, to tell me how many people with serious, serious money are saying, when my MA, my MA with the settings of 9.6. When the price goes above my MA 9.6, I will buy. How many people are doing that? Okay, interesting. How many people are saying, when my Fibonacci from the top to bottom retraces 50%, I'm going to sell or buy? How many people are saying, when I get a higher, high, higher, low sequence, I will buy? How many people are saying, when I see a news come out and it's good, I will buy. How many people are saying, yeah, but this is an overall downtrend, I will sell. Do you guys agree that there is all kinds of people out there? All kinds of people out there, correct? Okay, okay, let's start with that. Let's start with that moment right there. You are aware that there's every type of trader out there every type of trader out there right doing all kinds of stuff so how do you make money so how do you make money and where is the golden strategy of it's not 9.6 ma it's 9.7 ah of course no no right like like that's gotta be ridiculous. Like you should know by now that's ridiculous. Correct? So far so good? So first things first, that feeling of I need to find a strategy that's gonna make me rich overnight. You take that out of your brain and you throw it out the window saying, get it out, get it out there. It's not happening, period. Now, if you feel, oh, well, in that case, I can't trade Forex, then that might be the answer. However, that's not what I'm trying to show you guys here. I didn't invite you to this webinar to be like, all right, I, I think you should quit Forex. <laughs> I, I wanna show you the information so you can make an educated decision based on what you know, based on what you know. Okay, shall we go deeper now? A little bit deeper. Now, you guys have heard of Apple, okay? Not the fruit, the company. You guys have heard of Tesla? You guys have heard of Amazon? Okay, let me ask you this. If you look at a stock chart for any one of these and the stock chart is doing this, is that good for the company or bad for the company? Huh, very good, very good. If it does this, is that good for the company or bad for the company? Good, got a bunch of geniuses in here. Let me switch it around just a little bit. Here we go. When the market goes up, is that good or bad? Ah, something so simple, people just overlook. It's good for Euro, but bad for dollar. Good for Euro, but bad for dollar. And when it goes down, it's the opposite. So can I ask you one thing? Can I ask you one thing? When the euro starts to go up and we say we didn't buy it over here, we're buying it up here. Remember that, uh, that idea that we drew that we're not going to buy it down here. We only know to buy it up there. So if we're buying it up here with the stop loss over here and we expect it to go further, what we are saying with our own mouth and our actions, we're saying the US dollar is going to stand by and just take the hit. Because another 200 pip movement, another 400 pip movement, the banks in the US must be closed. They don't care about their economy. They don't care of what they're doing. They're just going to stand there and twiddle their thumbs. Is that possible? Is there any country who's going to be like, 
oh, our, our economy is getting so weak. No problem. Let's see if my 7.9 MA will make the economy recover. Let's see if my 50% retracement is going to make my economy recover. Let's see if my higher, high, higher low is going to make my economy recover. Good, good. Now you're starting to open your eyes a little bit to quit with the simple technical analysis. You need to quit that. You need to quit that because that is a zero sum game. You're going to make money. You're going to lose money. You're going to make money. You're going to lose money. You're going to get nowhere. So far, so good. Everything's making sense so far. We're just touching base on very simplistic basics right now to make you understand this is great in stocks and that can continue. But in Forex, that cannot continue. That's a problem. That's a problem. The further it goes, that's more of a problem. The further it goes, that's more of a problem. So the higher you buy, the more dangerous it is. The more dangerous it becomes. Because governments are not looking at that Fibonacci number. They're not looking at that MA. They're not looking at the, all these things that everyone seems to think that it's the golden key. It's the golden key. Okay, so let's take it a step further. Okay, I want all of you guys, any of you guys, any one person to tell me a product. What is a product somebody buys? Tell me a name, uh, an item that somebody would buy. I'll, I'll take whatever I see first. Okay, I see car, iPhone, milk, uh, TV, bread. Okay, L let's say TV, okay? Everyone knows what a TV is, big, okay? All right, so let's say a TV. Let's start with something simple, okay? The TV price right now in whole is $50, okay? Is $50. And it trades between $50 and $51, the price of the TV. So far, so good. When it trades between that price, what does this mean? What is happening? It's a range, but what does a range mean? There's satisfaction in the market. People are happy to do business in this price range. They're happy to do business, which means Hey, I want to buy. Okay, sure, I'll sell. Hey, I want to sell. Okay, sure, I'll buy. Does that make sense? Now, as a trader, can you make money if the market doesn't move? No, you can't. You can't. Okay, what if I give you more leverage? What if I tell you, you know what? You have an account that's 40 or 50 is to one leverage. I'm going to give you 10,000 is to one leverage. If the damn sucker doesn't move, what are you going to do throwing more money at it? How many lot size do you need to throw on to make two pips of profit? You're going to die eventually. Does that make sense? No movement, no money, period. Okay. Okay. So far, so good. A a am I am I being too rough today? I'm sorry if it's. Uh, am I talking a little bit too loud or anything like that? I, I get carried away, and uh, so if if it's too much, if it's in your face, you know, you tell me. I will un in your face. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Let's let's get in a little bit deeper. A little bit deeper. Okay. All right. So that TV that was trading between fifty dollars and fifty one dollars. Now, there's businesses, right? There's businesses. There is a business, let's say, Best Buy. A lot of you guys might know Best Buy as a uh, retail store in the U.S. It's a huge retail store. And they're all across the, all across the U.S. Now, is the sound not clear? Can you guys hear me just fine? Yeah, I, I think the sound should be okay. Okay, yeah, that's fine. All right, so there's Best Buy. Um, there's Circuit City. I, I don't know if Circuit City is still around, but there's Best Buy. It's a huge store. I think in the UK, it's called Curry's or something like that. You, you guys have an idea. In Dubai, yeah, Sheriff DG, that's quite popular. So 
These are people doing business. Now, those people who are doing business, they are reliant on that price better be as stable as possible. Why? Because when they place an order to China and that shipment comes in three months later, that price better not move. The more stable it is, the better for businesses. So far, so good. Traders, the opposite is true. Traders are like, for God's sake, give me some drama. This needs to be like a Spanish TV show. Give me some nonsense drama that people are going crazy. Only when there's drama where it becomes like a TV show, like a Korean TV series, like, oh, finally I can make some money. Because for traders, price does not matter. Does it matter if price reaches $75? Are you going to freak out for the TV economy? As a trader, do you actually freak out? If Euro touches 1.9, are you going crazy pulling your hair out and saying, my goodness, what am I going to do now? Traders don't care. They're just, they're just saying, if it's 75, can I do business between 75 to 85? That's it. That's what a trader is concerned about. So do you understand who you are versus who businesses are? So far, so good. No, it's not about traders don't have feelings. It's not, it's not traders are not evil people. They provide liquidity. Don't, <laughs> don't just think people are just coming in and just you know, like taking money off the market. It's not like that. Okay, so far, so good. So businesses, they care about the price. Traders, not so much. Okay, now that we know this a little bit, let's go a little bit deeper. A little bit deeper, okay? From 50 to 51, okay? Prices start to move. Now, when it starts to move, no trader is involved right now, okay? A regular trader. A regular trader who generally goes with the notion of show me first and then I do something. Show me first and then I do something, right? Can, can all of you guys tell me one thing? Um, in Asia, right, in Asia, what are some of the biggest careers right now? What's some of the biggest careers? When you go to university, what are parents forcing you to do? Go to IT, go become a doctor, engineer, MBA. Why these? Why these? Why aren't they selling, I want you to become a shoemaker? I want you to make the best shoelace in the world as possible. Why not these? Because the whole world works on show me first and then I will do it. Show me followed by copy. That's how the whole world operates, which means no one wants to do the research to do this by everyone says, oh, now that I know it's going up, I want to also join it. I also want to therefore join it. Only when your neighbor becomes a doctor and buys a BMW is when your next generation is going to try to become a doctor as well. That's how it works. When you see a list of the 10 most highest paying jobs, you'll be sure there's demands coming towards that industry automatically because people don't know what they're good at. So they just want to participate. So far, so good. And the, the markets are exactly the same. Show me first, and then I will follow. Okay? All right, here we go. Oh, yeah, sorry, Vincent. That's actually a very good point. It's 51 on top of 50. <laughs> okay, I was so involved, I didn't even know my numbers are all wrong. Okay, here we go. So now the markets move. Okay, ready? Markets are moving. Here we go. Markets move. Now, Traders are not in yet. As the markets move, the businesses are like, what is happening? Our TV industry is getting really, really expensive. That's not good. The TV industry, industry stops participating. They're saying, oh, hell no. I'm not going to buy at these prices. Are you crazy? This was the norm. This is not the norm. So businesses actually stop. Traders are now 
whoa, did you see that movement? If I don't buy it, I will never get my Ferrari. If I don't buy it, my dog won't get his own Ferrari. Okay? Traders are starting to get greed. As this movement starts to do its thing, whether it come, comes into an MA, whether it comes into a 50% Fibonacci, whether it comes into, I don't know, you, you name it. Whatever it does, some system or strategy is going to say, buy, buy. Prices start to move further because everyone is now getting in on this. Everyone's trying to get in on this. But by this point, the majority of the public do not notice it. The public only sees it here. Why? Because now it has coverage. Now it has coverage, which means every blog article, every Forex factory post, every friend on the internet that you have, every telegram channel, they're all going to be talking about, did you see that movement on pound USD? I caught 200 pips. What did you do? Right? How many guys see people posting screenshots of a red bar like this and then a green bar like that and saying that was my risk to reward i risked 100 dollars to make nine million dollars right like it, the internet's full of full of that right right so this makes people say i also want to buy i also want to buy and therefore they start getting involved much higher so far so good as they're getting involved much higher i want you to tell me Compared to the stock market, is this good for the Forex market? The stock market can keep doing this and it's just fine. That's normal. This cannot sustain in the Forex market. It's bad. So can I ask you guys one question? To make money, what do you need? Okay, you need movement, okay? However, here's the, here's the problem in Forex. If you have too much movement, the opportunity has now flipped to risk. Strange, isn't it? No one ever teaches this. So now let me ask you one more thing. Let me, let, me, let me ask you one more thing. When you're in a trade and you're making profit of let's say 30 pips, how many of you guys here have the feeling of, you know what? I have my stop loss of 20 pips. I'm in profit. I bought it here. I'm in profit. I'm gonna move my stop loss to break even to zero. And I'm gonna let this run and say, let's see how much money I make. How many of you guys have a feeling of doing that? That idea of let's see how much money I make. Now, I want you to answer that question for me. Is let's see a good thing or a bad thing? There you go. There you go. So as a trader in the, in the stock market, you're looking for my losses need to be a lot smaller than my wins and my wins they better run they better run like the wind right super fast it needs to go 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 i want to make 10 r's on this trade now in forex things are slightly different you need to get in at a good spot and you got to get out at a good spot so let me show you something here Ready? Let's say you're smart enough to figure out you need to buy this. Okay? All of you guys are, okay? It's just a matter of some education might not be there, but let's say the, excuse me. 
And let's say the education is there and you've understood that you don't want to be buying when it's going up. You want to be buying when it's coming down so you can anticipate the move and not participate in the move. Correct? So let's say you buy this, you figure it out, you do, you've done the research and you buy it. Now that the buy is performing and you're like, okay, well, what I'm going to do for my stop loss is I'm going to use a static stop loss of 40 pips which is down here. Okay. I don't want to put it exactly at my recent low. I want to give it some space, you know, because of spread, because it needs some space to move. Right. You've heard people do that, right? Let's, we're going to give it some space, man. Got to give it some space, you know, can't put it exactly just in case I get spiked out. All right. Just in case I get spiked out. So I want to give it some space. So you put it at 40 pips. Now you're in the buy and the buy starts performing. Can you tell me, is this buy going to go here? It's strange that all of you guys are saying no, but yet 99% of people need that to happen. Weird, isn't it? Everyone here is saying no, but yet once you're in the trade, 99.9% .9 of the people, they just try to hold on thinking it's going to reach there. Really weird. Really, really weird. Okay. Something to think about. Something to think about. Now, here's the thing. On the buy, on the way up. On the buy, on the way up. What are some of the problems you have? You have this resistance to deal with. You have this resistance to deal with. You have this resistance to deal with. You're telling me you're going to go from here to here and no one is going to step inside your way. The US dollar is going to sit back and be like, you know what? Let me wait until John finishes his trade and then we'll fix the economy. Let me wait, you know, until Lisa gets her take profit first, and then we'll do a stimulus package. Come on, you gotta be a lot more serious than that, right? So if we take it a step further, now I, oh, you know, I'm, I'm joking about it obviously, but I want you to really take this in and be like, the market doesn't move the way we wish it moves, the way we wish it moves, correct? All right, so let me ask you guys one thing now. Let me ask you guys one thing now. So now that you know a movement that begins is the best place to start, a movement that is out there in the open is the worst place to join. Correct? So we don't want to be getting in when it's obvious. We want to be getting in early stages. So far, so good. All right. Okay, so now let's go back to our stop losses based on your basic knowledge that you have now. Okay, your basic knowledge that you have now. When the, when the market moves in a particular direction, how do we make money? How do we make money? Just a fundamental question like uh you know a theory give it to me in a theory how do we make money we buy we buy obviously we know we don't want to buy here that doesn't make any sense right we want to buy it okay if it comes back down we'll buy it again okay so let's draw this in a nicer way so let's say the markets were ranging that was the reason why I draw the range first is because I want to show you something brand new that happens in the market. So this is a brand new movement. Okay. Brand new movement coming out of this, coming out of the sky. And you're, you're looking at this and you're like, Hmm, I don't know if he's going to stop above here or if he's going to turn into a channel and he's going to stop over here. I don't know that. So how do we know? You need to watch how it comes down, 
right? You need to watch how it comes down. If it comes down struggling compared to how it went up and you measure left to right, you will know that whatever the case is, wherever you might end up buying, wherever that buy is, you know you're at least on the right side of the market. So far, so good? Okay. Now, that is telling you the momentum is still hot. Whoever did this up movement still wants to go. As that momentum goes up, and it starts to pull back down again slowly. And you're like, I think it's a buy right here. And then it does this. And it stops you out because you had a stop loss of 30 pips exactly. No logic, no nothing, stops you out. And then it does this. Is that buy actually incorrect? Is the word buy incorrect? No, the buy is actually correct. It's just the logic of where you entered. Let me ask you one more thing. What if you entered here and you put the same 30 pip stop loss? Now that nonsense logic of 30 pips works. It just works suddenly. But here it doesn't work. But the buy has not changed. The buy is still a buy. It's a matter of where you're trading that will determine if your stop loss is legit or not. Let me twist it up a little bit. So fixed stop losses. Now you know the problems with fixed stop losses. If you've entered in the wrong spot, it's going to fail. So far, so good. Let's go into not fixed. We're going to do the below the recent low. Below the recent low. Okay, ready? Let's do that one. Now, below the recent low, what if the market does this? From this process, it jumps up. I'm sorry, I clicked on the wrong button. From this market, it suddenly does this. Bam. Now, all those people who wanted to buy, they're like, oh, no, no, no. I need to buy this. And then they jump onto the buy right here and they put stop loss below the recent low. Can you tell me, is the buy wrong? No. Is the stop loss wrong? Yes. So can I ask you one thing for all of those people that you hear saying the market, the broker, the big boy, they just love to do stop hunting. They're not bloody stop hunting. It's the guy who's entering here. He feels he's being hunted over and over again because he doesn't know what he's doing. So he has nothing but to point a finger at somebody so he can feel good. You can't point fingers. You got to learn. So far, so good. Does, does that make sense? You guys feel that? Have you noticed that? Like, we can sit here and just blame the broker, blame the big boy, blame somebody. But what's what's the point? At the end of the day, it's us whose account balance slightly goes lower, slightly goes lower. What's the point of blaming somebody? You just feel good psychologically. It's no point. You got to learn. You got to learn. Okay. So now, Putting the price just below again has an issue. So what's common between these two stop losses? What's the common element? Can they both work? Can a fixed stop loss work? Yes, if, if you do it well enough, yeah. Can below the recent low work? If you entered here and you said, I'm gonna put it below the recent low? Yeah, that can work, right? But now what's missing is timing. It is not the issue of the stop loss, it's the timing. So 
if you're constantly getting stopped out and the trade still works, you're constantly getting stopped out and the trade still works, there is a timing element that's wrong. There's nothing wrong with the stop loss per se. You can change the rules of the stop loss all you want. It's not going to do anything because when this thing goes up like this, and then it goes like your, if that's your MA, right? Your moving average. And you say, okay, I'm going to buy it here, right there. And I'm going to put my stop loss below the moving average. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. The MAs will eventually turn down because the markets went down and go back up again. Right? So when you enter here and you put your stop loss below the MA, oh, this time it works. Right? So we've touched base on the different types of stop losses that the public generally likes to use, but you got to be smarter than that. The stop loss is in direct relationship to how you're reading the market. If the read is wrong, the entry is wrong. If the entry is wrong, stop loss is likely to get hit. And is putting a stop loss here the correct solution? No. That's not the correct solution because then for you to make any money, you need the markets to move this far at the very minimum to at least get two R's, to at least get two times the money you're risking. If you're risking $100 here, to make at least $200, you need a movement all the way up to here. The further you're going for, the less likely it will happen. The further you need the market to move in Forex, the less likely it is going to happen. So can I ask you guys the million dollar question? Is there such a thing as I come into the Forex markets and every day my goal is to make 200 pips, 300 pips? Is the goal to say, I am a pro at trading nothing but the pound dollar? And today I'm going to make money from the pound dollar and tomorrow I'm going to do the same and day after tomorrow I'm going to do the same. Can you do that? It's nonsense. You can't. It's not possible. Because if it's not moving, good luck. You're not going to make any money. And you cannot tell me pound dollar 365 days a year, it always moves and gives you 200 pips that way, 100 pips that way, 400 pips that way. No, it doesn't. So when you attend those type of information, informational strategies or seminars or ideology, you know, as the basic logic of Forex, that is not sustainable. It's just not possible. The person is talking out of his butt. <laughs> you see? Does that make sense? All right. All right. Shall we go into a little bit more in-depth details? So we're at a crossroads. How do we fix timing? How do we fix timing? Right? All right, all, all of you guys in here, let, let, let me understand one thing. Let me let me see where you guys are at. Uh, we have 890 people in here. I see nobody has left the room whatsoever. So I'm, I'm going to take it as none of you guys are bored and you're all, all focused, right? I promise you guys 60 minutes nonstop. You're going to get aha, aha moments. You're here, all focused. Can I get a yes? Focused? Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, okay. All right. Let's touch base a little bit on timing. Okay, let's touch base a little bit on timing. How do we conquer this timing? Okay, how do we conquer this timing thing? It's the worst enemy of every trader. So let's take a look at this. Okay, here we go. Prices are going up and down, right? Okay, prices move up a little bit. Okay, they come out of the range. Now, there's a certain type of trading that's done around here, right? What's that type of trading? What happens when you see this happen? 
what are the type of traders that get involved? Breakouts, right? So there's a certain type of traders who start getting involved called breakout trading. Now, what is this thing called? Fake out, false breakout, a probe, right? It's like, oh, it, it never happened. It never happened, right? So far, so good. Now, the first, absolutely first thing you need to understand is something simple like this. Look at the movement coming out of the range. Look at the size, size, excuse me. Look at the size of the range. Is the breakout bigger or smaller than the range itself? So is it outside of the normal of what the businesses generally buy and sell? Is it too much outside of their normal? No, it's fine. Here's what happens. In this process, in terms of structure of the market, it might look like, ah, oh, it might turn into a channel because he just made a slightly higher high. He just made a slightly higher high. Now, here's the thing. Watch very carefully. As the prices are starting to come back down to here, can you tell me if people will look at this as, oh, it's a fake out. This is a sell. It's a fake out. I need to sell this. The buys faked out. It never happened. I need to sell this without knowing what all this is happening. What is happening? Why is it just pulling in deep? Or is it actually a fake out? There's a difference, right? So we can't just say because there's a line that goes up, there's a line that goes down and it sits inside the line. Therefore, it's a fake out. No, you need to understand the context. The context is everything. You see, but so, so let me ask you guys one thing. Let me ask you guys one thing. Ready? Because we're talking about timing now, right? We're talking about timing, right? All right. This piece, I'm going to do it a little bit clearer so you guys can see it. I'm going to delete it. So I'm going to redraw that area so you guys can see it very, very well. And I'll change the color. When this goes up, oh, wrong color. When this thing goes up, and then it comes down and you are thinking like, okay, no, no, I'm, I'm a little bit more professional. I know prices are going to come down to the bottom of this channel and we're going to try to buy it off of there. But now that I asked you a question about the fake out, would you say, would you say people will also sell that? Okay, good, good. Stay, stay with me right now. The key to timing is to be a pro at both sides. Now, let me repeat that. The key to timing is to let go of your bias and be empathetic to both sides. Okay. Well, now, what, what do I mean by that? Sellers are going to attempt from here. When the price comes down to here, what do you think the sellers feel once they got in? All those sellers who got in here, how do they feel? Yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. It's approaching your area where buyers want to buy. What do you think the buyers are going to do? They're going to begin. They're going to start their buying. Now, if you buy from here, is this going to happen like that? No. No. Don't forget that seller. You told me there's a seller up there. Don't forget him. Don't forget that seller. Let him first panic. Let him first panic. As of right now, is he panicking or is he in the money? He's happy. So if prices start to go up, do you think there's a chance it might respond to the support resistance again? There's a possibility. There's a possibility. Prices then come down again, maybe, but this time, partially. How do you think that seller feels when it comes down? Oh, I can't even do what I used to do before. He's worried now. What happens as prices start to go up more? Do you think he's going to still stay in the trade or he's going to throw in the towel? Okay. Now, let me ask you one thing. So is this the best price to get in? Or is this the best price to get in? 
Number one or number two? Number one, based on price, yes, it's better. But number two is going to make your stop survive. Because what if the sellers that you were empathetic for actually have more money and they respond? But then they couldn't. That is going to be a stop loss. Not because you don't know it's a buy. It's simply because you didn't do that five minutes worth of extra research of saying, let me see how the sellers feel. Let me see how the buyers feel. Because you told me in the beginning of this webinar, there are all types of people looking at the market in all types of ways. So if you're a buyer, don't think everybody else is a buyer. Allow them to breathe also. But when they stop breathing, when they are starting to panic, that's when you step in. Now, if you buy it here, are you buying it before it becomes obvious to the whole world the buyers are here? Absolutely. So let me ask you one question. You bought right here. You're in that buy and you're like, yeah, baby, making money, making money, making money. The prices go up. There's a resistance here. It bounces off of that resistance a little bit. There's a next resistance up here. Prices go up again and bounces from that resistance. Remember earlier when we talked about it, we were saying some people will join here, but majority of the people will join up there. If you're in the buy from down here, do you not like it that when you close your trade, you have to hit the sell button. When you sell, somebody is saying, yeah, yeah, give it to me. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it to me. Give it to me, please. Give it to me. I want to buy it. You can get filled. If you trade large, large size, this spot, they will take your money happily, happily, happily. They will take your money. That's how a movement eventually slows down is because the larger players or the ones who know what they're doing are cashing out every step of the way. Every time it gets higher, they get cashing out. They start cashing out. So have you seen a movement that when it goes, it generally slows down? Have you seen that before? Have you seen the momentum die like that? It's because who got in earlier, they're taking out some more money, taking out some more money, taking out some more money. And when the sellers see this, the sellers start saying, oh, maybe it's time to get in. Maybe it's time to get in. Maybe it's time to get in. And the buyers are less and less and less. That's how you get a rollover phase. So what's the key to timing? Is it a strict strategy? What's the key to timing? Is it, all right, guys, when you see the moon line up over the ocean on top of Australia, and then the sun rises from the east, and then you have a 40% pullback onto the markets, and then Trump scratches his nose, that's when you buy. No, please don't do that. Please don't make random rules on when this line gets crossed to the other side, I will buy and I'll put my stop loss here. Who's drawing that line? Who is drawing that line? Nobody. Nobody is drawing it. It's just somebody drawing it on his screen and he's telling you to draw it too. Why? Try to read what the market's trying to tell you. Okay, so having that said, having that said, timing has everything to do with a simple meditational word, if you want to put it to remember, empathy. If you want to buy, feel for the sellers first. Feel for the sellers, your timing is going to be good. If you want to sell, feel for the buyers first. Feel them, understand what they're going through, and then you can enter. That's how you're going to get your timing just right. And that's when your stops will survive. Whichever weird way you give it a rule for your stop losses. My stop losses needs to be exactly 17.5 pips. Okay, well, you do that, but you time it right, that'll survive. 
Okay. All right. So aha moments today. How many of you guys here actually say, can say you learned something in this 60 minutes? How many of you guys here would say, I didn't learn anything, Brown man. I just come to your webinar every time and I tell you I didn't learn anything, but I still come every time. <laughs> All right. So one thing for sure. Okay. Uh, can you guys do one thing for me? Okay. One thing for me. Okay. I want you guys to type in the chat that you will make a promise going forward that you will respect education. You have to respect education because, and more than respecting education, you need to respect yourself. Because if you come to a webinar and you're cynical, then what's the point of coming to a webinar? Just turn it off. What's the point of coming to a Forex education and saying, I don't think that works. Quit Forex. It's as simple as that. Why follow it and not do anything? You know what I mean? If you're there, then accept that I'm here because I need to learn something. There must be something I don't know. Let me see if this is valuable. Leave the mind open. It is only then will you learn something. Correct? So the rules of our webinars always is you come in with an attitude of, I'm going to act like I don't know. Let's see if I learned something new today. Okay? And those of you guys who do not have uh, the Mastering Price Section course, if you want to learn the way we learn the markets, the way we look at the markets, you guys will get an email from us. Uh, I'll send out a video to you guys in the next uh, 20 minutes or so. And you guys will be able to join the courses just like you've seen, you know, 75% of this room is already in that. Uh, I wish you guys can see all the messages that are coming across on how all these people actually enjoy the Mastering Price Section 2.0. It's a whole different way to look at the markets. There, there's nothing more powerful out there on the internet, period. Okay, there's nothing more powerful out on the internet right now. It's an award-winning course as well. So I really hope to look forward to seeing you guys inside the membership, uh, inside the course. It is some, a course that you can keep for a lifetime. And uh, I look forward to seeing more of your progresses. So thank you guys for coming out here and uh, spending some time with me. Uh, Keep it strong, do better, and we'll make sure you go further every step of the way. Cheers, guys. Thanks for that. Bye for now.